morning. It's a beautiful day here. I am in Union Estates in Maynardville, Tennessee at another DR Horton community and I'm very excited for this couple that has found their dream home here in Maynardville. Really, really nice spot to be. Brand new homes going up and we're going to do a pre-drywall inspection today here at DR Horton. Janet and I just love what we do. New or existing homes, we just love changing people's lives. It's a great day. All right, time for a pre-drywall inspection. I'm gonna take a look at this beautiful home for Veronica and Brian. And it's pre-drywall, so here we go. It's a beautiful day and a great way to look at exactly what people are purchasing here. Tennessee country, that's what they're purchasing. In a beautiful, safe, smart designed subdivision a community way of life this is a neighborhood that's going to mature and appreciate and value and be a great safe place for community and family so this is a brand new dr horton home at frame it's a great time to see the house before they put insulation and drywall on it in fact the opportunity was there uh, to see this home right before insulation. So we're at the stage where insulation is next. Take a look at this backyard. So one of the things I hear an awful lot is I don't want to buy a new home because they're right on top of each other. Well, this doesn't look like it's on top of me at all. The neighbor's backyard is angled because the lot fans out. So the backyards are wider than the front. The property line runs in between them. So you're going to see a halfway line right about there. You can have all this space. This is your backyard. And yes, it's farmland. And one day it could e easily be sold and developed. But right now it's farmland and it doesn't look like it's going anywhere. That barn looks like it's fairly new. That metal roof. The point is, you can only control so much of your environment. And this is pretty nice control. Take a look behind you and you'll see a drainage area. That will probably be a drainage area for a long time. There's stone going right down the right side. You see that? So we're not going to build there. There's going to be a lot of easement. This row of trees is here intentionally. This is a fantastic lot. Very, very, very nice. So here we are, folks. Frame stage. Kitchen. Family room. Another bedroom with a nice closet. And this is just the first floor. Full bathroom down here. And this looks like a nice flex space and office. As you come into the right. Or parlor. <laughs> Steal a phrase, a nice pantry. I can't tell you how many houses we see, even high-end homes, newer, larger homes, that don't have a pantry. What is it with these builders and not putting a pantry in? Heading upstairs. And right away, I see a full, big, nice room. Nice full laundry room. Second floor laundry. You got to like that. No need to carry your stairs, your clothes up and down stairs. You put them on, you wear them, you throw them in the hamper or in the laundry, and you put them in your drawers. And there you go. Nice, pretty bedroom. Nice open loft area. This is a great place to, for the kids to have video games, relaxing space, office area, you name it. Okay. Now we've got another bedroom here with a nice closet. This is your master bath, double sinks, toilet, shower, tub combination. Bedroom. Okay. And then we're going to go into the split. I love it. So this is a split floor plan. You come up the steps to the right. Our bedrooms, loft, full bathroom, bedroom, and now we're in the master bedroom. Fantastic. 
nice and big nice and big long too very long master bedroom so you can see your outlets here this will do a king bed with no trouble at all nice closet coming in here nice big closet wow you can't appreciate this in the frame stage but you will because we're going to come back and do the final walkthrough there's your double sinks here this is awesome This house kind of has two masters, but definitely this feels like the master of the masters upstairs. Just love it. Anyhow, want to give you a quick look at what pre-drywall looks like. Shortly, we're going to have a gentleman on site and he's going to go through this and we're going to do a little review for our buyer. The buyer cannot make it in, um, but they're moving here. <laughs> They'll be here next week. We like to be here for our people, so we're going to be here today. And let them hear a little bit from the builder during this uh, free drywall stage and then uh, send this up through a YouTube video to this evening thanks for watching so I'm on the second floor man it helps to get in the air this is a fantastic fantastic view and a great yard and by the way there's the retention upon I was telling you about that's the overflow this is a protected area they have got a really nice space. So you own this and maintain this, but you got the benefit of no bun behind you. What an incredible lot. Folks, I'm gonna wait till you're not bent over us, sir. Also. Hey guys, welcome. Um, we're here at the pre-drywall just to show you around a little bit. Um, I'm just gonna show you a couple basic uh, areas and we'll walk through the house. Um, starting off with your garage here. You have your electric panel, your water heater um, installed out in the garage. Um, you can see all the plumbing. Um, is in the walls here, the tubs are set, the HVAC's all in, and uh, we're kind of getting ready to um, go into drywall and insulation. Um, we have scheduled inspections tomorrow for the county inspectors to come, as well as the electrical uh, state inspector. So, if everything goes well, we should be going into drywall sometime next week. But um, I'll just uh, follow the lead and we can head on into the house. Your garage entrance door here, looks like we might, uh, have to get that replaced. It looks like purple primers on there from the plumbers. So we have the first floor guest bathroom, single vanity, toilet, tub shower combo in here. Right off um, a guest bedroom or office could be. Uh, a, right on the outside of your family room. There is a walk-in, not a walk-in closet, a coat closet here, which your um is your modem so this is going to be kind of your smart center here this is where your modem and router is going to sit and they'll fish in those lines from the outside and it gets plumbed right into here fantastic um we'll walk into here will be your main living area um double window here sliding glass door here on the back wall here we'll have um your stove your stove lines running right here so we'll have a stove countertop on every each side uppers here big pantry um, big walk-in pantry. The pantry, as well as all the linen closets, will have three shelves in them. Um, so there'll be more if you want to add more. There's definitely more space to add more shelving in here. Um, fridge will be here, and then you'll have another uh, countertop here next to the fridge. Cool. And your island, which will house your sink and your dishwasher, as well as some cabinetry. Very which good. is nice. Um, in the front here, this is kind of like your uh, flex space, they call it, off the front of the house your uh, entranceway for your here, and then you have this flex room. That's just finished with drywall, right? Yeah, this just gets finished with drywall. Fantastic. So, it's well, open fantastic. here. Um, I've seen people close this off and put like double doors, or you could close it off in the future if you wanted to. Sure. You know, add an extra usable space that's private. All right, why don't we head on upstairs? Yeah. Here we do have a, a laundry room, which is nice. It's on the same floor as all the bedrooms, so you're not tracking laundry up and down the stairs Amen. here. Amen. Um, we do have the master suite here. Great size. Obviously, you can easily fit a king bed and more. This is huge. Yeah, it's you can space. You can go bowling in here so big. As well Fantastic. as uh, the master bathroom there. So you can see the plumbing set up for the um, double vanity. So we'll have a double vanity here as you walk into the right. We have um, a stand-up shower across from it there. Mm-hmm. We have um, two closets up here, uh, kind of like a, a his over here with the window in the front wow. of the house. Wow. Call it the his closet because it's small and there'll be two 
hanging shelves on each side there. Okay. Um, you turn around on this side, you have a big walk-in closet here. So this area here and this little niche back in here. Yes, we're going to appreciate this more after so. drywall comes in, but it's yeah. huge. Really nice closet. And then you have your water closet here too, which you'll have a separate door on to enclose the water closet. Nice, okay, cool. Area, so. Yeah. Very good. All right. We'll head back out here, out to master. So you have um, one guest bedroom over here. It's kind of mirrored on the other side of the house. They're both about similar. You do have a um, closet here. Mm -hmm. Lots of closet space in this house. Um, We'll walk out here to the um, upstairs flex area, which is nice. It could be a kid's space. It could be an extra seating, TV watching area. Um, you know, you have options. That I think the couch would go better over here just because it's a big wall. And you do have another closet there for storage. Fantastic. And, uh, you have a space to hang a TV or whatever you're going to use it for. Mm -hmm. Sitting, reading, nook. Um, and then you have a couple more bedrooms back here on this separate wing. So this is a opposite wing of the house. So it's on the other side of the... Um, Upstairs than your master, so you have two kind of mirrored um, bedrooms over here mm -hmm. as well. Looks like you got a double basin sink up here as well, correct, Mike? Yep, yep. So this Another is double the... vanity here, and this one's kind of shut off too. So you walk in, you have a nice linen closet here. You have a double vanity here, mm -hmm. and then the um, the toilet and the shower room actually has a separate door, so that could be closed off. So if you, <laughs> if you got kids. kids or multiple people, <laughs> you can get multiple uses. Two of them can be in here at once and kind of. Yeah, that's Get great. Stuff done if needed, you know? Amen. Yeah. Well, this is fantastic, man. Another huge closet here. So this is where we used to put the um the HVAC unit. Right. So this is just going to be a closet with no shelving, but lots of storage space there. We put the um, HVAC unit up there, so you'll have a set of pull down stairs. That's where the pull down's going, right in yeah, the hallway. So you'll be able to get up on this platform. There's not a whole lot of space up there. It's mainly just for the unit itself, and if somebody needs to get up there and service it. Um, so your HVAC unit, HVAC unit is sitting right up here with a pull down set of stairs to service it easily. Yes. Yeah, yeah that's really mm -hmm. cool. Um, and they could add additional platform space if they want to, their own plywood later on. And they gotta yeah, be very yeah. careful. you could add on afterwards, definitely. Definitely. Um, and, and if you, you do that, the, yeah, you raise it up so the wiring isn't being compromised. Yes. Raise and, it up, um, right? Insulation too as well. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, good. This is great. Very, very nice. Well, thank you for touring us in here. So what do we need to know now? What's the expectation timeline? What happens next? And So I would imagine you're going to be a couple months out. Um, after this process, we should be, um, after inspections, as, as long as we pass, which everything should pass. If not, a lot of times it's just an easy, quick fix. Mm -hmm. um, we should be hanging drywall, I'd imagine, at the latest um, next week, early. Okay. And that's about a 10-day process, 10 business days. We mm. get them. To hang it and finish it. Um, after that's said and done, then we start um, working on the finishings of the house. Um, you know, we install your interior door, your trim, um, flooring will go in, cabinets will go in, so on and so forth. Um, countertops, all your trim fixtures in the house, like electrical trims, plumbing trims, and so on and so forth. That process moves typically pretty quickly, and then we slow down again to get all the punch work done. We have to do the grading on the outside. Um, Get your gutters on. I believe we're getting ready to pour your driveway um, late this week, next week, -ish, mm -hmm. just so we can get some of the grading started, some of that work. But um, when I watch you build, we built, we sold many homes now with the R. Horton here and in Florida way before we got here 16 years ago. Mm -hmm. You guys came to Tennessee. We were excited. We were ready for you. Um, you guys build down the street. You just continue down the street. So I see other homes that are already sided, but they're getting their finish work right now. And as we make our way closer to the end of the street, we're in the frame stage for this particular thing. That's sure. pretty much your standard. How many homes are under are getting framed at the same time at on the this? Same time, four. We, we, we open up four houses every month. So I start four new houses every month okay. and we kind of move them along. And by the time this house gets done framing, you know, the next four behind them are kind of in the finishing stage. Yeah. So. We just keep it going so it's not overwhelming. We don't have too much being done all at one time, but we, we move forward at a time in this neighborhood. I got some you. Some neighborhoods move slower, some move quicker. Well, to the right of me, there's a slab. So that's yeah. going to be part of the next four, right? Yeah, so that one and then the three across the street. So there won't be much left to build. So by the time this one closes, the construction aspect on the street here should quiet down significantly. Yeah, that's yeah, true. We won't have much going on, which is good. And then we'll be... Around the corner here, a couple more, and then we'll be starting on phase two over there. Phase two is across the way. Yeah, on the back Fantastic. Side the what are we looking at the top right up there on the hill? Is that a uh, school or a retail or what is um, that? 
That's a funeral home. That's a funeral yeah, home. But the school is right behind you. You can see the lights of the ball field. The okay, there we go. Right the school's there. over the there. Union County High School's right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is I nice. Got you. And then Fantastic. the Gray School is actually right down the road to the right. If you make it right out of here, mm -hmm. the, um, the Gray School and Middle School is right down there. This well. is fantastic. And one of the things I love about the D.R. Horton Homes is they actually sell you a community. When you get done, everyone here is excited. Everyone is new. Everyone's anxious to meet each other and build relationships. So I really, really like it a lot. I just want to uh, show off the process, though. These will be next. It's pretty easy to see how you get her done. Efficient, fast, and produ producing on a way that is really well done. You guys have a protocol that works. Yeah, no, it's nice because we have everything pre-ordered, pre-assembled, ready to, you know, line them up because we build spec homes. So that's... Yep. That's part of the reason why we could build so fast because all the stuff's pre-ordered away ahead of time and we line everything up in a, in, in a nice and neat order and we keep moving. Well, good. Well, like I'm sure that machines. Veronica and Brian will be glad to see the, the stage of their home. It looks beautiful and we can't wait to see it on orientation. Beautiful. Wonderful. Thank you so much for the show. Thank you, guys. We look forward to meeting you. Okay, this little tour will be just for the buyers. If you want to down the road... Add wiring, change something. You need to know where your wires are. You need to know what your walls look like. You'll be able to go back and look at this video and see what the bathroom at the top of the steps looks like. Which actually, I'm sorry, laundry room at the top of the steps looks like. So there's where your water lines are, the electricity, the Coke can. That won't be there, of course. <laughs> Ceiling lights, vents. It's really cool to see it before the drywall hits. We're going to make a left from the top of the steps toward the front of the house. This is your master bedroom. Again, hanging things up. You would not want to drive a wall, drive a nail through this wall and hang a picture if you knew all that wiring was literally one, two, three, four. Get your stud finder. Make sure you're hitting a stud, okay? There's a lot of protection above and below to make sure you don't drive something into the two by fours and hit that electricity. Very, very cool. But I want you to just get a quick look at each part. So if you start hanging things up, you'll know what's here you can close this off a lock frame and see what you got okay that's the master bedroom potty in a closet in the master bathroom shower area okay this is pre drywall just remember that that's the his closet double basin sinks vanities you see your water it's interesting to note that the water lines are running down in this home okay Sometimes they run up, sometimes they run down, depending on the model of the home. There is a full, beautiful her closet right there. So you might want to hang additional shelves. What does that look like? Get a picture of it, okay? Lock it in. Freeze frame this. Back wall. Some people want to come in and put a closet organizing system in there and get rid of the um, wire shelving that comes standard. And that's okay. Wire shelving works good too, but you might want to be prettier. Right on. See that tube? That's something you don't get in existing homes. This is already set up for the radon to head out. And vent. Goes right through the roof. See a nice big old four inch piece of PVC. Love it. Okay. Little things you just can't put a price on. Okay. So anyway, I am now getting out of the master bathroom, walking back out to the hallway. There's your staircase down the steps. Okay. To my left, another bedroom. That's the top of the steps, rear of the house. HVAC line. Don't want to poke a hole in that while you're hanging pictures, do you? Okay. So very important for you to know where that's at. Okay. So again, here we are. Headed up the hallway. This is the loft room. That's a pretty wide area because it's not load bearing, obviously. Okay. But wide area between those studs. It's like 24 inches. So 16 inches of norm, which you'll see in a lot of the exterior walls where you've got a structural, but interior, you got a lot more space before you hit a stud. So have your stud finder. Look at it. Look at the weight that's being held over these, this double bay windows. Fantastic, right? Uh, just to know all the wood and where it is, is, is a lot of help when you're dealing with things. Um, something also while we're, while we're having fun here, you'll note this in the rest of the video. As you walk through, you may not see it, but there's a metal where you've got a ceiling fan support. You see that? That's a metal ceiling fan uh, mount for that. So it may not have a ceiling fan, but it has the ability to put one in. 
So those nice pancake outlets with a metal box or a metal brace on it. Something you want to be aware of. Again, you'd be able to lock this in. See all that plumbing behind the wall? Let's make sure we don't poke a hole through that, right? When you're hanging pictures. Um, I can tell you from a personal experience, I poked a hole in a drain line in my garage when I was mounting shelves <laughs> in a brand new house. And I didn't know why the water started leaking, but only occasionally. It was the upstairs laundry drain line. And I drilled right into it. Screwed right into it. Didn't pay attention. Okay. Um, so that was why I, I really try to help my customers because if I make things happen wrong, if I do it dumb once, at least to me can say, let that experience save you from doing the same thing. You know, really important to look at this. This is normal construction. Every house, 500 or a million. This is how they mount the shower head. There's a metal bracket there, but then there's PEX and PVC. You cannot put a bunch of things hanging on here that are 25 pounds hanging off the shower head without expecting some problems. Don't do that. Do not hang things off the shower head because that's all it is right there is a plastic fixture that then threads onto the shower head hanging into the hanging to the top. This is normal. This is not unusual. This is normal. Half million, million five, you're going to get the same kind of plumbing. You have no idea. This is what it looks like on the back of your shower. Okay. Not a lot of science there, so be cognizant of what that really is. It's a good time to see the rest of the house before it's actually finished and see what things are like. Um, again, that cannot support a ceiling fan even though it's got a metal bracket because it doesn't have the right thing on it. You see, this is a plastic box. Now let's take a look at this heavier duty box right here. See that? That's a metal box and a metal brace. That's a ceiling fan box. So we understand the difference, right? I want to make sure you guys get a look. Not a ceiling fan, even though it goes uh, joist to joist with a metal bracket, metal box. Boom. So when you start mounting, when you get your beautiful new home and you start buying ceiling fans, you're going to be in the know. Okay, so we're going back up the hallway at the rear of the house again, overlooking. We've already been on that side of the laundry room. Here's the master. Let's get a real good look at this again. We did that already, so I think we're in great shape, guys. Um... Hopefully this helps you. I'm going to go downstairs and quickly pan around that as well. Again, going down the stairs. Got lots of wood to support the staircase and the walls and the mid. Let's head to the front of the house. This is that beautiful parlor slash office slash flexible space. And you can see where your wires are hooked up here. That is not a ceiling fan outlet. You see that, guys? You got a plastic box on it. So that's not a ceiling fan outlet, that's lighting. You want to replace that box if you're going to put a ceiling fan in that room. Let's quickly go through the garage because it really is a place where you're going to see an awful lot of great places to hang shelving. You're going to want to know what's here and not poke a hole in your drain line like I did when I bought a beautiful home and then poked a hole right in the PVC drain. So funny, my wife did wash one day and finally it started leaking and I knew why. Because the load was draining at that perfect time. Hit a pipe just like this one by putting shelves on this wall and you'll know real fast what you did wrong. It wasn't a bad fix, I just cut the drywall open and I put some very heavy epoxy on there, closed it all up, cleaned it up and away we went. I mounted my shelves up. But who wants to make that mistake if you don't have to? Okay, so there's all the protection. Again, we talked a little bit about that hidden in the other rooms. There's your, this is your uh, breaker box. Lighting, lighting, probably garage door power. Yes, and there's the uh, wiring going to the garage door power. It's kind of fun to see it all, but just know what you've got. If you're putting shelving up, if you're going to poke through your walls, hopefully this will help you see everything you need to see. Okay. Let's go do the back side of the home. Mike, thanks for your patience. I just love to give this to our customers so they don't have to do the guessing game trying to figure out what is where. Okay, this is great. This is your family room. Okay. Dining area. All right, we can do the kitchen. Now, Mike was great to show you these things. Awesome. 
where your power is, where your water line is for your refrigerator. Again, you're going to slow this down and freeze or frame it if you need to. But at least you can see what we've got going on. Especially if you get really creative in your, lunch, in your uh, pantry and you want to hang different things other than the wire shelving. One free tip for you. Take clear plexiglass and have a cut to size and lay it right over the wire, sh wire shelving. And your salt shakers won't fall over. And you won't have to buy all new shelves just to make them more functional. Okay, so this is your back wall. By the way, that's your backer board for your cabinets. Okay, it just makes it easier for them to hit their mark and support the cabinets with a lot of strength. All right, sliding doors. And real quick on the ceiling. Now, uh, there is one exception here. This is a different style ceiling fan outlet box and it'll be this one here. Or it mounts directly to the floor joist. That one allows you to screw in and that meat goes right into the wood so it can support holding the ceiling fan. Is that right, Mike? I'm looking at a ceiling fan mount right here. Yeah, that one's mounted exactly. Exactly. Right the, uh, yep, they're a little different than the metal to metal box. Have, um, mounted boxes in all the bedrooms and the family room area. For right, that. I got it. Of course, we don't do it in the. That's right. I just I brought that out to them. That's just a plastic. That's a fixture. Not a fan. But all okay. the bedrooms and the um, living room are all pre-wired and have the amount of box. So all right. It'll support that. Dynamite. There you go, guys. We just want to make sure you have this reference in case you need it. I hope you found this video helpful. And I really want you to know that Jen and I take great pride in helping our new home buyers with every step of the process. So remember, when you buy new or existing, make it a Palumbi and give us a call today.